Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum and uh, good day to all We are from group 2 and we present about the case study on the Wenzo train collision Okay, about this uh, about this uh, accident is on the 23rd July 2011 40 were killed and at least um, 192 were injured uh, how when uh, D301 really ended uh, strain D3115 at a speed of 99 km causing both a uh, train to derail and four cars were fell off the, the viaduct ok how this happened uh, at approximately about uh, on uh, 7.30pm earlier that day lightning struck at uh, TC5829 and making the red uh, band appear even though there, there are no train there uh, this uh, uh, this error was uh, noted by the CTC Cent Centralized Traffic Control Center and the maintenance team was uh, sent there uh, to repair but could not repair the error 20 minutes later uh, train uh, D3115 arrived at Yonja, Yonja station and uh, has been notified uh, by the CTC on the 40 section. So uh, when arrived at the uh, when arrived at the section, uh, ATP, uh, ATP was operated and uh, automatically was braking uh, for the train. Then, uh, the, however, the train uh, the driver could not start. Uh, could not uh, restart the train manually and fa failed to override the system due to the uh, broken uh, signal box uh, and during this time also the driver could not contact uh, the CTC to respond about the situation then another train uh, arrived at Yonja station which is a D3 D301 uh, where the driver received a green signal from the CTC and uh, see that uh, all uh, green light uh, indicating there are no, no train on the line ahead so when uh, it goes uh, through the track at 8.21pm uh, approximately a late response from the CTC uh, and the line, uh, the line was uh, lost. The D three zero one slammed into D three one one five, where the uh, accident uh, occurred at that time. Okay, now let's get the facts of the accident right. Based on the studies conducted by several parties, it was discovered that the main reason towards uh, the accident was due to first is because of the track circuit failure that was uh, damaged due to the lightning strike there was a red light warning section uh, shown at the TC5829 secondly is the failure to manually restart the D3115 train after the emergency stop by the AT, uh, train ATP thirdly is because of the communications equipment failure that was damaged due to the lightning strike Due to this, dispatcher cannot contact the CTC to inform on the uh, train that is stopped by the ATP. What is the miscommunication between dispatcher and CTC about the breakdown? Uh, because of the communication equipment failure, the dispatcher cannot contact CTC. Uh, fifth is the D301, D301 train uh, that hit the D3115 was supposed to... Uh, run first but uh, because of the scheduled delay uh, it ran uh, behind D3115 uh, that caused the accident and the, finally is the environment factor uh, during the accident time it was heavy rain and stormy and D301 came out from the tunnel uh, which they have they don't have clear visibility of what is uh, what are the obstruction in front 
Okay, now let's discuss on the ideas. Uh, what lead to the accident and why the accident happened because of the reason that I have mentioned earlier. So first is the track detection circuitry failure, probably because of the design and operational issue whereby uh, the system was designed without any lightning protection. So when the lightning strikes, the equipment installed at site damage and uh, it caused the uh, it caused the equipment failure, which has led to the accident. Secondly, uh, maybe the equipment installed at site are, are not up to standard and uh, in, in compliance with safety. So no proper testing and evaluation are conducted before the equipment are fitted to use and installed at site. The hazard risk uh, uh, of the design failure is the lightning strike on equipment and no real-time information about the train occupancy at the track and TCC transmitter error information to the CTC system. Uh, lastly is the human factor uh, because of the short of time to repair track circuit failure and lack of knowledge by the maintenance team to repair the faulty, uh, faulty that caused the uh, uh, track circuit uh, not to not able to uh, uh, not able to operate um, accurately. Second, for the manual mode fail to operate ATP, uh, as we know that uh, as per EN or IC standard, uh, restricted manual mode is able to override the train ATP setting. However, uh, probably because of the potential error or setting, uh, different setting on the train critical alarm, it caused the failure uh, to switch to RM mode, uh, which has uh, caused the train driver not able to restart the train when the, stop, when the train was stopped due, uh, by the ATP. So the hazard risk of this uh, fault is, uh, in case of emergency, train fail to operate manually and train stuck at the block section, driver fail to restart the train in visual mode for 7 minutes due to the abnormal track circuit code. So uh, the quality assurance and quality control issue is uh, probably is a poor practice or non-compliance of standard operating procedure when they install and when they design for the system and also install equipment asset and testing uh, and commissioning. And uh, probably it's because of uh, no simulation or proper testing conducted prior to the uh, prior to the system um, trial running. Next ideas is the communication failure of the equipment. The system design uh, without lightning protection for clients and also there are no secondary or backup system other than GSMR. So as for the hazard risk, uh, the lightning strike on the equipment uh, does uh, fail uh, GSMR network and also driver cannot be contacted neither by the dispatcher nor peso soft station. Uh, next we go for communication failure to not respond. Labs respond from centralized train control and watchman and hazard risk is the miscommunication between dispatcher and CTC, uh, loss communication between both of the uh, loss communication between the train and also the CTC. Uh, as for human factor, is no prior training regarding the emergency response, and also the dispatcher and watchman fail to understand the importance of right band failure. Next idea is the schedule delay. Uh, the operation management should be more effective. The hazard risk is the loss of time because of the train delay. Human factor is the management level. Lastly, the environment factor. Uh, the design and operational for this environment factor is that uh, the insufficient lights inside the tunnel, insufficient train hazard light design, and the hazard risk is the no clear visibility of the object. Hello. Uh, my name is Cairo Lafna. Now I will talk about the uh, learning curve. First, uh, track detection circuit failure. Why track detection circuit is important? Is there any other detection system available in case of track circuit fault three? Why no lightning protection in system? Does the design follow its standard and safety compliance? How does the selection of signaling equipment done? Manual mode. Second is manual mode fail to override ATO. To enable manual mode that can override the whole system during emergency. Design flow setting in the train control system when RM will be triggered. Has all the dispatcher well trained using RM. Communication failure equipment. Why no lightning protection in the system? 
why there is no redundancy for communication system, why the GSM are not functioning during event. Next, communication failure human response. Poor emergency response to system failure. Worry responded to the emergency situation, not notifying the driver of D301 that 3115 was ahead of in a timely manner. Schedule delay. What causes the delay? What impact does the delay cause to operation? And the last one is environment factor. Why there is no clear visibility of object in front? Does the train equip with hazard light? Hi, I'm Nadro and I will talk about action plan that should be taken by the signaling system manager. From the facts, we know that the track detection circuit fail due to the lightning and to overcome this we have to make sure that the emergency rectification work could be done in a timely manner and to prevent this to happen again we have to make sure that all the signaling equipment uh, installed at, at site is fully protected by the lightning and we have to enforce the pro lightning protection device in all the project in the current project and future projects and I have uh, as a system manager also we have to check back all the standard and regulation and make sure that there will be a strict compliance to this standard and also we learned that the manual mode failed to override the automatic train operation and uh, protection so to overcome this we have to ensure that schedule maintenance that all train operation modes are working including in the restriction mode and to we have to investigate with the train uh, contractor uh, what are the root cause of failure to switch to the restricted mode and rectify the error and make improvement on the system setting next is the communication failure so all the system, all the signal system should have a redundancy design. But in the in this Venzu case, the problem is there is no backup communication between the OCC and the train driver, and as a result, the driver cannot inform the OCC the port that he he is not able to restart the train and get out from the restricted mode. Um, one of the Proposal is to have a walkie-talkie or a GPRS network as a backup to the GSMR uh, network and then to ensure that all communication equipment are fully protected by the lightning mm -hmm. Next action is to have an adequate staff on a standby in the maintenance team in, order, in case of the emergency and to provide the training for them to make sure that the emergency works can be completed in a timely manner. Next action is to make sure that there will not be any delay, any schedule delay hap like the one happened in Wenzhou uh, where the high speed train is running behind a commuter train. There will be a rules uh, in the schedule that the high speed can should not be running behind a commuter train. And also to implement the strict schedule and ensure that all train confirm to the schedule. We, as a system manager, we have to set up a risk team, risk assessment team, a risk officer to conduct a risk assessment for the train operation in the case of delay or emergency. The next is the environment factor. The action is to equip the train with a hazard light in case of a train fail to start and to give a warning to the train uh, behind and also to conduct a lightning strike study throughout the alignment stretch.
the reflection from the case study is that it should be zero tolerance on safety matters pertaining to the system design. The train management should focus more on the safety over operation and there should not be a questionable bidding practice which could lead to the sloppy development of the signaling equipment and inadequate managerial supervision, low safety awareness and poor education of rescue process leads to the Wenzhou crash. And Lastly, in the event of emergency, such as this case study, staff of each train station should be aware and coordinate with CTC for scheduling trains entering and leaving station, including setting the maximum speed of train. The main takeaway from this activity is that signaling equipment is very important and it should always be protected from lightning or any other environmental impact. And Equipment failure is unavoidable, however, it should not lead to an accident if there is an adequate warning and error message given to the CTC operator, train dispatcher, and train driver. Also, this accident can be avoided if the maintenance works are done in a timely manner. I learned that the filler method is very effective when done in group. All my team members are able to brainstorming and give ideas on the case study. And that's all from us. Thank you.